you're going to be really very excited about this uh, next guest, and she will be calling in very shortly. And that is Glenda Taylor, who mm-hmm. is a writer and a poet and an absolutely fantastic writer. And I talk about her books and talk about her poetry a lot. Right. And um, the name of the book, and I have to say this over and over again because it is absolutely fantastic. So those of you who are students of literature and you know all about the good poets, poets and writers, but the name of uh, Glenda's book is the Jalamuso's drum, and mm-hmm. she talks about the Jalamuso. In other words, the Jalamuso or Jalamusos are mm-hmm. griots. Mm-hmm. So once Glenda Taylor calls, calls in. As a matter of fact, I think she just may be on the line right now. Uh, Je- uh, Glenda, are you there? Hi, how are you? I'm here. Uh, fine. Hi, Glenda. How are you? Hi, how are you? All right. This is Eric. <laughs> yes, I recognize that charming voice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, you know, Glenda, I love your book. I love the uh, Del Musso drum and so many of the others. Uh, and suppose you tell people now, don't make your dan- answers too long because we have a lot to talk to you about, but what is a Del I mm. know. A, a griot, a cultural historian, that's the best term to use. Uh-huh. Someone who tells the history of a culture or a group of people. Okay. Now, you chose a number of African-American women to talk to, am I right? Not only African-American yes. women, but mainly African-American women. So, yes, African-American women. Mm-hmm. Well, how did you happen to write this book, by the way? Well, what happened is I, went, I, studied, I was working on my master's, and I was studying American history and culture. And I realized when I – well, I also collect autobiographies, and I love to read autobiographies. And when I started reading the autobiographies of African-American women who were born before 1955, I realized how much history they were telling that were not in ordinary history books. Mm-hmm. And, what, and I was fascinated by it. Mm-hmm. Everybody from Catherine Dunham to Etta James to Whoopi Goldberg to Aretha Franklin, when you read their autobiographies, there's so much information that we're not aware of, but it leaves out a lot of missing pieces in Uh, history. All right. Now, you started naming some of those people. Now, when I read the book, I just, you know, I was was so enthralled with it. All right, let's start with, uh, who is the first person that you just mentioned? Anyway, talk about Nina Simone. Now, she is a griot of Delamuso. Why? Because Nina, when you, first of all, with Nina Simone, when you specifically talk about her song lyrics, yeah. she's the voice of the. She was the voice of the civil rights movement. Mm-hmm. She, I mean, if you remember some of her songs, mm-hmm. Mississippi Goddamn, right. the um, the King of Love is Dead, mm-hmm. To Be Young, Gifted, and Black, she sang a lot of songs in which she tells the, the history of what was happening in the movement at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and these, a lot of these women, these Jello Musas, as you call them, they have a a, a uh, position in history because of their cultural uh, uh, contributions, and, and it affected the entire culture of African Americans. Is that why you're putting them in, in this category? Well, well, Nina Simone specifically, she well, today is the 50th anniversary of the death of Medgar Evers. Mm-hmm. And President Obama and, you know, Murray Evans were at right. a tribute um, today. Yes. And one of the things that she tells you, the history of the song Mississippi Goddamn, mm-hmm. and basically she tells the story of what happened with the the death of Medgar Evans. And she tell, in her autobiography she does this. Mm-hmm. And then she also tells when the three little girls were killed. Yes. That's 50 years ago. Yes. Um, that happened in the fall. And she tells you how outraged and angry that she was to the point of wanting to kill. Yeah. And she said that she decided that she was going to transmute that energy into music and song. And that's how she came up with the song of Mississippi Goddamn. And, of course, The King of Love is Dead is about Martin Luther King. Yeah. So she uses her song lyrics to tell the, the story of, you know, that experience. Now, I have a story about... Um Nina Simone. I saw her. I saw her perform at mm. uh, Symphony Hall in New York. Mm-hmm. And, How long ago was this? Uh, years ago. <laughs> 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 have you date yourself? I'm just trying to get 
the context. This where is my son asking have me, been right? In the sixties, when the you in the height of the rights movement. About because, that, maybe a little after. You know, it yeah. would have been a little different. Well, she, 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 you know, she, she was still around until the twenty first century, so yeah. it could have been maybe about seven or eight years ago. But right. anyway, I do remember her singing that. As a matter of fact, when she came on stage, in fact, she was on stage, you know, at the piano, and when she started singing that, you know, people immediately, you know, uh, broke into applause. And when she finished. And the way she finished, the way she said Mississippi, goddamn, it was just so it was around that time, it was around that time period. That's yes. what, that's what I'm trying to get the historical context. Okay. You know, a lot of times we idea. rarely we rarely are able to get a historical on the ground context when you talk to individuals. Now I'm not talking about the people that are in the history books so much that we everybody knows so much yeah. about, but people who had lived it. Like uh, my mother here was at, at various functions, and other people that I've met during the course of my life that it might have been. Sing Nina Simone perform that song during the height of uh, of that oh, controversy in that time period it gives you the context in which it was and the heat of the moment it is a little bit more palatable. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was very emotional. I remember that's, because a lot of times she when she when she performed she didn't just sing she told stories while she was singing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's true. It's, yeah, it's true because even you've told me stories about you were actually there. At the March on Washington. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I mean that's powerful. Yeah, I was yeah. there with, with uh, your uncle and right. my brother-in-law. Eric, right. Right. Uh, you know, and and um, Donald Payne. Late Congressman Donald yeah, the late Payne. Congress, right. And as a matter of fact, uh, his son, uh, the present Cong- Donald Payne Jr., might be on tonight giving us uh, some information. But yeah, that was really, really very powerful. And the march was absolutely fantastic. I mean, that was a time when we were all. You know, activists. We became activists. We had to become activists. Mm-hmm. So, but I want to talk more, uh, Blend, about this this creative process that you went through to to get this information. As a matter of fact, the one person that you pinpoint a lot, it fascinates me, along with Sissy Houston, and that is Whoopi Goldberg. Now, yeah, she's well, she's yeah. hilarious. She, so Whoopi Goldberg is brilliant. Yeah. And when you look at her career. Mm-hmm. And how much she's done, and how many areas mm-hmm. that you know she's been successful, everywhere from Broadway to film to you know voiceovers. I mean, she she's a great actress and a great comedian, and has been successful in a realm when you know that uh, wasn't the preferred image. You know, the 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 a black woman with a rather dark skin, uh, not a light skinned black woman, or you know the traditional Lena Horn and and those that car- that physical type that had been uh, in vogue for so long and acceptable by the entertainment standards. Now comes Whoopi with the with the dreads yeah. and, and looking like a, a very natural African American woman. The the time that she broke through on the type of uh, work that she did was so impressive that who no would yeah. nobody would have thunk it and and yeah. and she. That's right. I, I remember, and I remember being angry when they said, they said, like, basically Hollywood was saying, well, what are we going to do with her? Because, right. she, because she came out in the color purple, right. and she was just so good and so great. Right. And then, of course, she had done, I think it was 84, when she, or 85, when it actually came out, uh-huh. the, um, the uh, you know, her one-woman show, and yeah. when she was, bril- I mean, she was brilliant in that. And that- yeah, on Broadway, I remember that. Uh-huh. And she, I mean, she was so good. I didn't see the original on Broadway. I saw that when it came on PBS. Uh-huh. But I saw it when she did the 20th anniversary show uh-huh. of it in 2005, mm-hmm. and she was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I remember because that was around the time I was just starting my career as an actor, and uh, she was on Broadway at the time doing that. And we actually received some awards for the show I was in, and, and this they gave her an honorary award, this organization, and she came through. Mm-hmm. And this was, uh, uh, it was a, an honor to share that award from that organization with her. Then you look at her now, but she was what organization kind enough. Was that for you? I, I forget, but mm-hmm. it, it wasn't a large organization. It just just shows you the type of person she was. She was very appreciative. Yeah. Uh, that they gave this award, she found. But well, she got cheated out of the Oscar. I don't care what anybody says, because <laughs> she was so brilliant in that role. As a matter of fact, she and Oprah, both of them, because Oprah probably was a supporting actress, and yeah. she was the primary. They were just so. I mean, that, that was. Those were awesome performances. She absolutely it was, and it was a. Uh, it seemed to be a role that came along at the perfect time for yes. her. You know, it was, it was around the time that the peaking of her career, 
And, and then here comes this part, you know, when they were trying to figure out what to do with her. And here comes this role that was almost uh, almost written, tailor-made for her. So, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. But you have to admire how she navigated her career at Hollywood as someone as a, and still a, is lasting. Right, it's still you know, lasting. With her personality and her right. humor and yeah. her analysis and right. critique of everything. Right, she, right. And, yeah. And, and, and Love as, her. as someone in the business and watching, you know, as African Americans, we try to figure out where we're going to fit and how you could fit. And, and it's interesting to see how some people find a way uh, against the odds or against what's the norm. Because, you That's know, right. at one point, around the time of Ghost and those things, she uh, Another was... Another film I love. Right, it's a great movie. She was, <laughs> she was great. In- <laughs> but at a, for a short time, she was the highest paid actress in Hollywood. Even wow. if it was, at that time, she was getting more money than Julia Roberts, who was the highest paid. But yeah. uh, it, it turned out that this particular project that Whoopi had going on, uh, she got a, a, such a rate that for that brief period of time, she was the highest paid actress in Hollywood. So that's something really. And if you look at, like I said, my mother said in, in her performance in Ghost and, and other, and other I stories. I never will forget that. That she was really, really good. She was uh, good. Even the one where she played the associate, I don't know if you saw that, she dressed up as a white male. Yeah. She was quite <laughs> yes. good. She was very, very good in that. And then she produced also, she's produced television programs. Mm-hmm. She she wrote a, a children's book mm-hmm. in addition to her own, you know, autobiographical uh, works. Uh, the Sister she's Act. Busy. She she stays active. Yes, yeah. and uh, and uh, Sister Act, and now being the View, and, and turning Sister Act uh, uh, into a, a Broadway play. Uh, and guess what? Mom's Maybelline. She's doing the. Um, she's impersonating. Oh really? Mom's Maybelline. I hadn't heard that. Oh really? Yeah. Is that Broadway or film? I now I you know I just heard it a couple about about a week ago you know mm-hmm. on the view. Wow, she's perfect. She'd be perfect for and, that. And you know she is absolutely boy that part will be born for her. Really? I don't know if it's a movie or if it's a play. I uh, you know I just forgot that. Uh, I yeah. think that also that that was an idea that was a <clears throat> had come about for a while. Yeah. Trying to moms maybe you know uh, that's another woman that's probably you know, could be included in your book, Glenda, uh, Moms Mabley, because uh, mm-hmm. uh, there's so many rich stories about women like that and people like that that yeah. were in the entertainment industry. Moms Mabley, another one, was uh, outside the, the physicality of what they were looking for at the time. Mm-hmm. And, and she was really funny. I remember when I was very young, I don't, I don't know what age, but they were giving her a Grammy award. I think it was Grammy. Emmy. It was one of the awards. It was either Grammy or Emmy for something. Probably Grammy for the spoken word or something. Glenda. And she says, "You know, I'm really very uncomfortable on this stage." Glenda. And I remember her taking out her teeth. Glenda, listen. I have to ask you something. Are you on a cell phone? No, I'm not. Okay. On a landline. Well, we might not be able to hear you uh, as well, but we were told the from can. the engineering booth that it was coming out okay. Before with other people, I don't know if Shauna's in there. She could let us know how yeah. that call's coming off. Everything is okay. All right. Okay. okay. Makes oh, I'm on a landline. Okay, so you okay. can continue on with the the point you were making about moms. Maybe yeah. are there other uh, folks in the book yeah, there I that want, you? I want her to tell us what Whoopi says about uh, some of the other stars. Didn't she in your book? Didn't you write that she had commented on some of the other stars that were really very interesting? Her analysis or critique. Well, she, one of the things she was saying is uh, in her. Uh, autobiography is called, I think it's called The Book. Mm-hmm. And she said how she was influenced by Diane Carroll. Yeah. You know, Diane Carroll, she remembers, you know, being young and seeing Julia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, with Diane Carroll coming on, now she was one of the first first black women to do a role with um, who? Oh, now, and- she was Julia. She, she was remember, I think Marco Page, <laughs> Little Boy, and then she played... A nurse in the doctor's what office. The first, you know, we even we've had this. She was not the first. Who was the first? Gail Fisher in Mannix. Right. Yeah. And we're talking about a woman uh, having her first own television series. Yeah. That was yeah. Diane Carroll. Okay. Gail Fisher right. was, was. But a, still, a she was the first black woman. You know, you know, doing a, a role of that part. You know, assisting a major. Yeah, but we're talking about someone that's starring in their own television series okay. as, uh, as Diane Carroll was. I got it. Uh, well, it's actually time for us to go to a break real quick. So hold on, Glenda, stay with us. We'll be right back. Go Proto. If you're in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, AK Tri State area, you're in the perfect spot to join a fast growing community of energetic, political, creative, and eco conscious activists focused on real climate change and environmental awareness. Now it's time to bring the fight to the airwaves. 
So we're calling all musicians, students, professionals, and earth lovers to get down with Eco-Socialist Horizons on the GoPro Radio Network and help tackle the greatest challenge humanity has ever faced. If you're interested in getting involved, and there are many ways that you can both on and off the air, email us at ecohorizon at goproradio.com. That's Eco-Socialist Horizons with Joel Cavell and Quincy Saul only on the GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head www.goproradio.com You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network the fastest growing network in the galaxy GoPro Radio Network listen to the voices in your head All right, we are back. Hey, Thompson here with Eric Payne mm-hmm. and with Glenda Taylor. Glenda. Talking about Glenda's book. Yeah, which, which is, is the Jalamuso's Drum. Mm-hmm. Glenda, are you there? Glenda? Yes. Carol inter- interviewed and asked her the uh, question of what, how, what did she think from the time she came on television to now, say, for example, a show like The Scandal with Carrie Washington. What does she think about the progress that has been made? Uh, Glenda, are you talking with us? We're on the line with you. Um, yes. Can um, you hear me? Can you can you say that yeah. last statement that you just said again? We caught the tail end of your statement. Say, Am I muted? No. Go right ahead, Glenda. Say it we, again. We, oh, okay. What I was saying was that I would love to see um, an interview with Diane Carroll asking her what does she think of the of television and the progress that has been made since she was starring in Julia to now when you have a show like Scandal starring Carrie Washington. Ah, what you would think about, you know, Carrie Washington. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And the progress, you know, the change in the image. Yeah. Because, you know, she was, the show was named Julia, but yeah. she was, you know, assistant to, and, you know, the character that Carrie Washington plays. That's right. Olivia Pope is yeah. a much stronger character. Yeah, maybe the, Carrie Washington really. Well, I mean, some she, 60 she, years later, I guess she was allowed to be, you know, uh, the changing roles of, of black people in the country. It kind of makes sense that, you know, this is the evolution, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, back in Diane's Carol's days, that was a, that was a come up for black people. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> for us to have someone yeah, black on, <laughs> on TV and having that job that she had. So uh, now we get fast forward here to the character uh, Olivia Pope. Which is a a, a great uh, transition and evolution. Yeah. Uh, who are uh, some of the other? Uh, Wait a minute. I want to know what you thought about scandal. Remember, I, Glenda, I, we were talking about this, and I said, you know, what we were going to be asking Eric what you yeah, thought I about scandal really watched as it, so an I, actor. I cannot I cannot comment. On but the, but the storyline is itself. This is a very powerful right. African American woman uh, who has this love affair going along with going on with the president of the right. United States. Uh, I think it's good. It's a good uh, to see what black women in challenging roles like that. And Leading character roles in television series is always is always good. So I think that's a and it has become so popular and so fascinating that mm-hmm. each week they leave a, what they call a cliffhanger, right? Yes, and it's very well written. Yeah, by right. Sandra Rhymes. Right. Yes. Yes. Now, uh, Glenda, also you mentioned Josephine Baker. Now we don't know an awful lot about Josephine Baker. So tell us what your assessment is. Well, what I find fascinating about Josephine Baker, I remember seeing her on television when I was very young. I didn't know who she was. I could tell that Johnny Carson was holding her in very high esteem, and the audience was giggling because, you know, at the point, that point she was in her 60s, and uh-huh. I guess they were really out of touch with who she was and, yeah. you know, the way in which she was speaking with her accent. Mm-hmm. But he was holding her very high, and I didn't know... My image of her, when you know, I looked it up, found out who she was, was you know, a performer, an entertainer. But Josephine Baker was a very active part of not just the civil rights movement in America, which she left and told America, you know, to take a flying leap for the way they were treating her and people of African descent at the time. But she went to France and she participated in World War II and was an honored war. Um, she was honored with all, with the highest honors by um, President uh, with De Gaulle and just all kinds of because of her participation and her putting her life on the line. Mm-hmm. So she was doing all kinds of things. 
as far as helping uh, the Allies yeah. in World War II. And when she died, she had a, a military funeral. Wow. And thousands of people um, poured in the streets in, in France to honor her. So she is very, very well respected in France, not just as a performer, a dancer, a singer. Yeah. And also one of the other things that I didn't know is she was one of the few um, women to speak at the March on Washington, and some of the, the organizers of the March on Washington did not want her to speak uh-huh. because of her entertainment you know, background. But Martin Luther King and his wife insisted. Uh-huh. Wow. Wow. We have to give out that number once again. We have to think we have a caller. Right, we have a caller, but that's uh, I believe that's Congressman Payne. So we're gonna, uh, Congressman, if you could hold on, we're gonna uh, talk to Glenda Taylor a little bit more, and then go to Congressman Payne to talk about uh, this week's uh, political political events. Um, So uh, if you want to just wrap up a little bit, uh, Glenda. Yes. You know, one thing. Every time I talk to you, you know, know it's never long enough. But let me. Let me just tell people that it's the Jew, the Jalamusos drum. You have to get it. Those people who are interested in literature and about the female entertainers, we still haven't talked about Lena Horne. We still haven't yeah, talked my, about my, my interest is Houston. My interest is peaked now, now that uh, yeah. I'm hearing that yeah, totally. you've been paying homage to all these incredible yeah. women. And, and yeah, yeah. Etta James. Etta you have Etta James. You have Ruth Brown. Perfect. Kit, boy, Dionne I'm, Warwick. I mean, yeah. it, there, there are a lot of them. And they're, they're very, uh, um, what's her name? I can't think of her name Ruth now. Houston, Ruth Brown. Everybody. Right. Okay. Right. But listen, we will have you back again maybe next week or the week after, but we have to talk to you again. Now, you know this. Thanks. Yes, of course. And I know you're going to talk about the, the new appointment of the National Security Advisor. Mm-hmm. Glenn, if you want to hang on, and uh, you might have some questions for the Congress. Yeah. Why don't you hang on? We'll get you in this Hold conversation, yeah. too. Uh, let's go to Congressman Don Payne, Jr. Yeah, let us know uh, what's what's uh, been going on and also with the passing of the late Frank Laudenberg.